The Royal Rumble may just be my favorite time of the year to be a professional wrestling fan. I mean, sure, WrestleMania is far and away the biggest event of the year. However, there's something special about the Royal Rumble. It almost feels like wrestling Christmas. It's the event where we get to see faces that typically don't get time on premium live events and we get awesome returns and debuts. So today we're gonna be talking about potential surprise entrants in both the men's and the women's Royal Rumble. Now I've broken the surprise Royal Rumble entrance into four categories. Return from hiatus, NXT call up, WWE return, or WWE debut. And as always, don't forget to subscribe to the channel, ring the bell for notifications. If you're a wrestling fan, you're gonna like this channel because we upload daily wrestling content. All right, let's jump into it. Let's first start off with the women's Royal Rumble and looking at potential returns from hiatus. So these are WWE superstars that are currently under contract with the WWE that we just haven't seen for some time because of injury or other reasons. So let's start off with Liv Morgan, who a lot of people are pegging as a potential favorite to actually not just return, but win outright the 2024 Women's Royal Rumble. Now, in my opinion, I do think that she is more or less a lock to come back at this year's Royal Rumble. I know that she had some legal issues, but from what I understand, these legal issues have not prevented the WWE from booking storylines for her upon her return. Turn. And frankly, I don't think that there's a better place for Liv Morgan to come back than the place where she impressed us all so tremendously last year at the Royal Rumble. I would say that Liv Morgan returning at the Royal Rumble is more or less a guarantee. It's just too perfect a venue for her to be able to make her return. Especially like when I look at women's Royal Rumbles in the past, most of them, their surprise entrants are typically legends of the past that have no chance of winning, like the Tori Wilsons of the world, the Layla, the Michelle McCool's types. So it'll be nice to have a genuine surprise a return somebody that we haven't seen for the better part of over six months in the wwe and Liv morgan just fits that mold perfectly do i think that she's gonna win it i really just don't think so i think that there's better stories in place for somebody like a bailey to win the royal rumble for the first time somebody that's been putting in so much work over the past year and a half to get damage control over with the crowd i think that bailey deserves her flowers at the moment and i just don't think it's the right time for Liv morgan now i know some people are gonna be like well santi just unequivocally hates Liv morgan that is that is fake news and not true. I don't hate Liv Morgan. Just because I don't stand her on Twitter and just make her my profile picture and do nothing but talk about her on Twitter doesn't mean that I hate her. By the way, all you weird little Liv Morgan stands, you should probably know that she doesn't care about you and she's not gonna suck your dick. Next up is Alexa Bliss. Now, Alexa Bliss has been gone from the WWE for very good reasons. She was pregnant and recently just gave birth to her first child. Now, I know a lot of people would love to see Alexa Bliss back, but I'm trying to do the math and it just doesn't add up. She gave birth in November and coming back as quickly as late January seems a little bit far-fetched. Like look at Becky Lynch, for example. She gave birth in a December and she didn't come back until August, eight months after giving birth. So only two and a half, three months between giving birth and being in the Royal Rumble might be a bit of a stretch here. So as much as I would personally love to see Alexa Bliss come back, I just don't think that it's in the books. I just don't think that it, it makes sense. Logically, I just don't think that she would be physically ready to get in the ring after giving birth. Now let's go to the women's NXT call-ups. I have two names on here that I could see potentially appearing in the women's Royal Rumble. The first one is Tiffany Stratton, who's already demonstrated that she is well ahead of the curve based on her age and the amount of experience that she has in the ring after her fantastic feud with Becky Lynch. And when I look at the things that she's got left to do in NXT, there's not that many left. She's currently in a bit of a one-off feud with Fallon Henley, which maybe potentially leads to them maybe partnering up, but I just, I don't see it. I think that, that Tiffany Stratton is ready-made for the main roster, maybe as soon as the Royal Rumble. And even if this isn't like a full-time call-up, I still think that if they wanna showcase people from NXT, when it comes to the women's division, I just don't think that it gets better than Tiffany Stratton right now. Plus, because of her feud with Becky Lynch, this would be an NXT call-up that would most likely be recognized by the majority of the audience that's watching the Royal Rumble, both at home and in the arena. Which is important because you don't want them coming out to complete dead silence or people asking, who the hell is that? We don't want that. So having Tiffany Stratton out there being somebody that is at least somewhat recognizable by fans of the main roster, I think is a good idea. Plus, I just think that she's ready for a spot like this day where it's not something 
something where it's like a full-blown feud on the main roster just like you know a couple of minutes in the women's royal rumble i think would do well for her another women's nxt call-up that i'd like to see make an appearance at the women's royal rumble would be the current nxt women's champion lyra valkyria now, i have her on here for very similar reasons that i had tiffany stratton she is somebody that would likely be recognized by people that only watch the main roster because she had that feud with becky lynch in fact not only did she feud with becky lynch but she actually was the one that dethroned becky lynch to become the new nxt women's champion so if she does make an appearance at the royal rumble i think you can more or less guarantee that she's likely going to get eliminated by becky lynch plus in my opinion i think it's better to use women that are actually active in the wwe today like nxt call-ups like tiffany stratton and lyra valkyria than these legends that just are not going to make an impact and, and the women's royal rumble historically has had to rely on a lot of these legends and i'm hoping that this is the year that they don't have to do that because they have a very deep roster both on the main roster and in nxt hey folks hopefully you've been enjoying the video if you want more wrestling content consider checking me out over on patreon patreon.com slash santi's app where you're gonna get all of my reviews for shows like smackdown nxt and monday night raw shortly after the show airs and you're never gonna see those on youtube those are exclusive to patreon patreon.com slash santi's app you're also gonna get the podcast three days early and the monthly mailbag so go check it out the link will be in the description of this video and yeah, that's it. Back to the video. Now let's move on to the women that I think could make their WWE return at the Women's Royal Rumble. The first one that we need to talk about is Trinity Fatu, formerly known in the WWE as Naomi, former WWE Women's Champion. She's been in TNA for quite a while sometime, winning their top women's championship, having fantastic matches, developing a great character for herself. So she has really raised her stock outside of the WWE. And recently her contract is about to expire and she just dropped the Women's Championship at TNA hard to kill so i think like this is just too much of a perfect storm to not start to place your money on naomi returning back to the wwe i almost want to say that this one isn't a prediction i think i'm spoiling it here i think that we're gonna get naomi back in the wwe one option i'm significantly less certain about is aj lee however this is a name that is circling all over the place as people try and connect the dots and try and figure out whether or not aj lee is actually coming back to the wwe i know people are like looking like a hawk at her Instagram whenever she makes a post about anything related to wrestling. I know that CM Punk was on the bump or some sort of it, it was the year end show where he had a bunch of AJ Lee figures in his background and people were like, oh, AJ Lee to WWE confirmed. It confirms nothing, but I understand people's desire to have AJ Lee back in the WWE. I mean, we're talking about a former women's champion that really was the spearhead for the women's revolution before the women's revolution even really got started. And we're also talking about a WWE superstar that retired from the WWE before she even entered her prime. She's only 36 years old. I think she's younger than both Charlotte and Becky Lynch. And it's understandable with CM Punk coming back to the WWE that some people are starting to connect the dots and think that perhaps AJ Lee is also debuting. I'm gonna say that I don't think that this is going to happen. I think that AJ Lee is like properly done with professional wrestling. I think that she's focused on acting and her incredibly successful writing career. I don't know, like if I'm writing and I'm an incredibly successful writing, a New York Times bestseller multiple times over, I don't know, I just wouldn't want to put my body on the line when I don't need to. So I'm going to say that this isn't happening. However, I want to be wrong. Let's be honest. This is the one that people are really clamoring for. That being Mercedes Monet, the formerly known Sasha Banks. Sasha Banks is arguably the most most sought after free agent in professional wrestling today where she is linked to just about every single wrestling organization but really it's going to come down to all elite wrestling and the wwe i mean i have my opinions over where she should go and i personally think that it should be the wwe however that's ultimately up to her where she wants to go get the bag and let's not forget that Sasha Banks at her core is a Triple H gal. She was best booked when she was booked by Triple H in the early days of NXT Black and Gold. She left the WWE because of the poor booking of her division by Vince McMahon. So I think it's logical to see, okay, we have Mercedes Monet as a free agent. We have Triple H who's now in charge of the WWE, the biggest wrestling company on the planet. I think that could be a match made in heaven in 2024. Look, do I think that this can happen? Absolutely. I really do. In fact, I hope it's one of those things that doesn't get spoiled. I hope it doesn't get leaked where she signed. I really hope that, I really hope that if she does sign with the WWE, that if she does appear at the Royal Rumble, that this is just 
a beautiful return and surprise that no one sees coming. In terms of full-blown debuts in the WWE, really the only one to talk about is Jade Cargill, because really at this point, we're all wondering where in the world is Jade Cargill? It's been a while since they've been hyping her up. They really spent a good portion of a month, month and a half, showcasing her every single episode of Raw, SmackDown, NXT, wherever they could, they were telling us that Jade Cargill is impending and she is coming. However, the word on Jade Cargill has been quiet over the last little while. In fact, really, really quiet. Perhaps it might be a situation where they're trying to maybe get us to forget about her only to give us this big shock debut and entrance at the Royal Rumble. That would be absolutely ass kicking. In fact, if she does debut at the Royal Rumble, I firmly believe that she should come out as number one so that she can get a proper entrance as opposed to just like a run into the ring. I want to see a proper showcase of Jade Cargill. I don't think that she should win the Royal Rumble, but I think it's time. In fact, if this is a situation situation where you're concerned about her work rate, maybe you don't think that she's quite ready in the ring, the Royal Rumble is the perfect place to hide those potential weaknesses because there's going to be a ton of women in there and she doesn't have to carry an entire match for 15, 20 minutes. She can just be a portion of a larger pie. So I think that it's happening, fellas. It, in fact, I think it has to happen. Enough is enough with Jade Cargill. You got to showcase her now. Royal Rumble is that's the perfect time. Now let's go to the men's side of things and let's talk about the return from hiatuses. I think that the most logical return from hiatus would be Sheamus. Sheamus has been gone for a while for more or less an undisclosed injury, not something that's been heavily publicized. And Sheamus is a major player in the WWE main event scene and he could be very valuable in the road, not just to WrestleMania, but in the road to Perth, Australia. And this would have to be a new Sheamus as well because they've made it clear that the brawling brutes are done. So this would be a Sheamus that might be looking for individual singles gold when he returns. But yeah, I, I think that if Sheamus is clear and ready to go, he's healthy. I think that this could actually be a lock that we could see the return of Sheamus at the Royal Rumble. In fact, if he's ready to go, I'd say that this is a certainty. One I am significantly less certain about is the return of Braun Strowman. Braun Strowman had very invasive neck surgery earlier in the year, and I just don't think that you can come back from that this quickly. However, similar to a Jade Cargill, situation if you want to protect Braun Strowman from taking any sort of major bumps and I think the Royal Rumble could be a good place to start because again he wouldn't be a focal point and he would only be you know doing a couple of minutes worth of offense and bumps. In my opinion if he needs to stay away to make a true proper full recovery then keep him away. We don't need him to return at the Royal Rumble. I just want him to be safe. I want him to return healthy whenever he's ready to do so and I just don't think that the Royal Rumble is the right moment the right time and I just don't think that gives him enough time to be healthy and ready so we'll see the other one is Big E my goodness I look I, I I just want Big E to return in some way shape or form there's no rumors or anything saying that he's going to return at the Royal Rumble however for me this is just like a personal hope because we're coming up now on two years of him being absent from WWE television from his horrible injury so if he if he's capable of returning it'd be a lovely it would just be so lovely to see him return at the Royal Rumble. I know WWE fans are still just kind of on the edge of their seat wondering what will be of Big E's career. So I, I think this is more so just uh, hoping for, for good news. And I think having his music hit at the Royal Rumble would make us all collectively lose our shit and just be happy and breathe a big sigh of relief that his career isn't over. Do I think that he's going to come back at the Royal Rumble? I don't think there's anything indicating that he is. So I'm going to say no. Uh, so I, I Again, I reiterate, it's just something I hope to see rather than something I expect to see. Another name that people are throwing out there is Uncle Howdy, but this just doesn't make sense in terms of the type of character that he is. To me, the only way that it would make sense for him to enter a Royal Rumble match is if he comes in as Bo Dallas, not as Uncle Howdy. Because if the plan is to continue Uncle Howdy in some way, shape or form, I think that, that the Royal Rumble just doesn't provide the right ambiance and the right stage for this sort of return. However, if the plan is to have him return as Bo Dallas, then I, he would get a huge ovation from the crowd in Tampa Bay. Now, because the WWE never officially unmasked Uncle Howdy to reveal that he was Bo Dallas, then maybe this won't be a logical move for the WWE to quickly transition from Uncle Howdy to Bo Dallas because there was no lead up to that. However, I, I mean... 
the the fans that know will know and the fans that know will obviously be appreciative of seeing Bo Dallas in the Royal Rumble. However, I don't see Bo Dallas and especially don't see Uncle Howdy making an appearance at the Royal Rumble. In terms of NXT call-ups, I'm only going to keep it to one because the men's side of the Rumble has enough names, enough faces, enough bodies to actually fill out a Royal Rumble match without the need of like a ton of legends returning. So I'm only going to save one spot for an NXT call-up, that being Braun Breaker. God damn it, this guy is ready for the main roster. He has nothing left to do in NXT. He's just doing side quests in NXT right now, teaming up with Baron Corbin. We know that's not gonna be anything long-term. This guy has done it all already in NXT, multi-time NXT champion, main event in just about every single NXT show, and he is ready, both from a character point of view, which I'm happy they kept him down there a little bit longer in order to hone that in, but when it comes from like a physical side of things, his move said he's been ready for a while. And I think that him coming in, spearing five, six people at the Royal Rumble would be an awesome introduction to the main roster. All right, now let's go to individuals that might potentially make a WWE in-ring return. Okay, I, I know a lot of you guys somehow all of a sudden started hating The Rock, but it's a possibility The Rock could return at the Royal Rumble. If the plan is to set up Roman Reigns versus The Rock, this is one of the potential ways that they could set it up as, and with rumors circulating that Roman Reigns is not participating at Elimination Chamber, that only leaves WrestleMania or shows after WrestleMania for when we we can get The Rock versus Roman Reigns. And if we're gonna get The Rock versus Roman Reigns at WrestleMania, one of the ways that we get The Rock to Roman Reigns at WrestleMania is the Royal Rumble. I don't love this. I don't want this to happen. I'm just telling you, be ready for this possibility because it, the chances are not zero. A super welcome return would be the return of Andrade El Idolo from AEW back to the WWE. To me, it is a certainty that Andrade is coming back to the WWE. I mean, just look at a couple of contextual clues similar to Sasha Banks, Andrade was best booked under Triple H and now Triple H is in the helm of the WWE. And on top of that, his other half, Charlotte, is a mainstay of the WWE. So I'm sure they would love to be able to spend more time together and travel together as part of the WWE main roster. Plus Andrade is awesome. I love Andrade El Idolo, Andrade Cien Amas, whatever it is that you wanna call him. He is fantastic and he did not get enough time to showcase how good he is on the main roster under Vince McMahon. He is a record recognizable name. He spent time in NXT, in the main roster, AEW. The crowd would certainly know who he is and they would probably give him a beautiful ovation if he does come back at this year's Royal Rumble. Now, because he didn't come back during New Year's Revolution or WWE Day One, I think that there's a strong chance that he comes back at the Royal Rumble because I look at what's left between now and WrestleMania. There's only two places that are suitable for somebody like Andrade to come back at. I would think that it would be the Royal Rumble or or the Raw after WrestleMania. Aside from that, I just don't see any places where he could come back where it would make sense for him to return. So I'm picking the early one. I'm taking him to appear at this year's Royal Rumble. The other one is Matt Cardona, kind of for very similar reasons to Andrade. Matt Cardona, the formerly known as Zack Ryder, was incredibly popular in the WWE. In fact, he was an individual that people collectively wanted to see succeed in the WWE, but never got the opportunity to do so. He decided decided to gamble on himself after being fired from the WWE and he has made a tremendous name for himself in the independent circuit as the indie god, the indie taker, the deathmatch king, Matt Cardona. You know who else did that? Chelsea Green took that very similar path. She also made a name for herself in the independent circuit and eventually got brought back to the WWE where she's now a mainstay. And I think that she's gonna be a main event player very soon. And I think a great person to pair her with would be her awesome husband who could play a very similar character to Chelsea Green, pair them up in the WWE and have him return at the Royal Rumble. The people would go apeshit for him. Now, do I think that this is gonna happen? Weirdly enough, I do, partly because because he wasn't at TNA hard to kill, which tells me that maybe he's trying to conserve his body for a WWE return. So um, fingers crossed, I think this could happen. Another option here is Stone Cold Steve Austin, because a lot of people think that it's a possibility that we might get Stone Cold Steve Austin versus CM Punk at this year's WrestleMania. I don't think that's gonna happen because the people are just too mouth watered about the potential of CM Punk versus Seth Rollins that it would just be wrong to delay that for Stone Cold versus CM Punk. Plus, Stone Cold at the Rumble? Mm. 
No, I don't think so. I feel like Stone Cold doesn't need to be in a rumble. I think like Stone Cold, if he's coming back, it's for one time at WrestleMania, that's it. So I'm gonna say that this isn't happening, but I do think that it's possible that we get Stone Cold somewhere within the next coming months. You know what's a weird internet rumor going around? <laughs> the fact that Sean Waltman, AKA X-Pac, might return to the WWE at the Royal Rumble. So I'll toss it on here, even though this would most likely be a very inconsequential return, it'd be a cool nostalgia Papa, that's about it. I, I, I do not expect him to work anything beyond just a one-off appearance at the Rumble if he does make that Rumble return. Again, it'd be kind of cool. I mean, it'd be a cool nostalgia pop, but that's about it. I don't really see... I don't really see how it goes anything beyond just a nostalgia pop. But hey, the Royal Rumble is a perfect place for nostalgia pop. So sure, why not give us the X-Pac nostalgia pop? I'll pop, sure. Did you forget about this guy? I hope you didn't forget about this guy. It's Brock freaking Lesnar. Now, in no world should Brock Lesnar be winning a Royal Rumble, but I do believe that the Royal Rumble is a perfect place to set up a Brock Lesnar feud versus whoever we're gonna have him feud against at WrestleMania, if that is the plan. And if I have my way, I think this is the start of of Gunther versus Brock Lesnar, I don't know. Now it's been a while since we've seen Brock Lesnar, but we know that Brock Lesnar likes to come back for these appearances where he doesn't have to work a heck of a whole lot. And the Royal Rumble is a place where he doesn't have to work a heck of a whole lot to make probably a good chunk of change. So I'm gonna say that this is most likely going to happen. I do believe that we're gonna hear Brock Lesnar's music at some point or another at the Royal Rumble. I don't think that he's gonna be winning, but I think that having somebody of the caliber of Brock Lesnar could help elevate whoever wins the this year's Royal Rumble. The next one is the Velveteen Dream. There's no way, right? There's no way. For those that don't know, the Velveteen Dream has tried to make a comeback to the world of professional wrestling. He posted an apology on Instagram about all the awful things that he did, how he did, misused his opportunity in the WWE. Granted, he was booked tremendously well under Triple H. I'm sure he'd love to come back to work under Triple H, but there's no way. There's no way that the WWE allows this to happen. He's just too much of a, of a image liability to have come back. Now mind you, this is coming from somebody that the Velveteen Dream was their favorite character in NXT. So it does hurt me to see everything that's happened with him. Uh, Cause uh, look, the Velveteen Dream it, for me has was like a really important character because it was the character that actually got my girlfriend a little bit into professional wrestling. So seeing this significant fall from grace kind of hurts, but I'm also conscious enough that there's no way in this world that they can allow him to come back to the WWE. Now let's talk about potential WWE debuts. MJF is coming to the WWE. WWE and debuting at the Royal Rumble is something I would never say. It's not happening. How are people falling for this? There is no way in this God's green earth that MJF is debuting at the WWE Royal Rumble this year. He has almost certainly re-signed with AEW. Oh, but Santi, they have removed him from the official AEW roster website. You got played. You got played. Anyone can make that happen. I just have to hit delete a couple of times on a keyboard and his name is gone. Look, there is a story already in place for him in AEW. It's a main event caliber story with the Undisputed Kingdom and Adam Cole. Uh, they're, they're, they're still saying his name on live television, for God's sake. They're, I just, look, I'm not saying that you have to be one of these marks that follows everything, but at the very least, don't fall for this crap. Of course, he's still signed to AEW. He's not, it's not happening. One that could happen is Kasichika Okada. If you don't know who Okada is, he's like the guy from New Japan Pro Wrestling. Now, some people might wonder whether or not Okada has like the star power to debut immediately at a place like the Royal Rumble. And I think that's a fair concern. All I'll say is that AJ Styles also came from New New Japan and debuted at the Royal Rumble. However, unlike Okada, AJ Styles had that history in North American wrestling with TNA, Impact, Ring of Honor, etc. Meanwhile, Okada has been predominantly featured in New Japan, even though he has made appearances here or there for North American companies like AEW. However, the WWE has been treating their Japanese stars overly well over the last little while. Even like their comedic acts like Tozawa are being treated really, really well. But then we have the likes of Nakamura, Sky, Asuka just being perennial main eventers. And to me, this could be the WWE trying to roll out the red carpet for Okada showing, hey, See, we can make stars out of Japanese stars. Come on, come join the WWE. I think it's a possibility. Do I think he's got the star power to debut at the Royal Rumble? Somebody like me that follows wrestling uh, probably a little too much? 
I would say yes, but I am conscious of the fact that the average Joe is not gonna know who he is, but trust me, he'll introduce himself real friggin' quick. Do I think this is gonna happen? Look, I'd be dumb to say that it's going to. I think it's the safe bet is to say no, but if you're looking for a logical debut that makes sense in terms of contracts, Okada's the guy. All right, folks, that's it for this video. Let me know in the comments what other Royal Rumble returns you'd like to see this year for the men's and the women's Royal Rumble or NXT call-ups. I'm also curious about that as well, but that's it. I'm done. Get out of here.